the month of November is is Diabetes Awareness Month. Um, it's not like people have never heard of the word diabetes, but but talk about what it is and how it is how, how treatment and how things have evolved over the years. Sure, Darren, I'm happy to. Um, diabetes is a complex illness, but at its root, it's an inability of our body to deal with the nutritional sugars that we bring in in every meal, right? Um, our body is always breaking down carbohydrates and other things into these base sugars. Glucose is what you often hear them called, and that's kind of a basic thing. And we have our, our body has some enzymes it releases that allows that glucose to get into all the cells of our body, and it acts as fuel for us to live. It's what we need every day, and it's why we eat. Now, for a variety of different reasons, but primarily for people with what we call type 2 diabetes, over a lifetime of different health issues, their body is no longer as reactive to those enzymes that we produce ourselves. The end result of that is what is often described in the historical literature as starvation amidst plenty. Though you're able to eat food that has sugar, glucose in it, and it's able to get into your bloodstream from your intestine, it is no longer then able to get into the individual cells that make up your body. Um, and it can cause a lot of problems, both that increase of sugar in your bloodstream, but also your body's inability to get the fuel it needs in order to live your everyday life. What are some of the early symptoms of, of diabetes? Sure. Well, for a lot of people, the primary things that I will experience or that they will tell me they're experiencing when they um, are first diagnosed with diabetes is having to urinate quite a bit more than they had to before. Um, and oftentimes this will become apparent to them over the course of several months. Throughout the day, they're a lot more thirsty. They're up a whole lot more at night. And of course, there are other reasons for this. But oftentimes that is a sign that your body is trying its darndest to kind of get rid of that excess glucose that's in your bloodstream. And one of the best ways it has to do that is to filter it out through your kidneys and then you pee it out. Um, uh, probably the next one that I will hear uh, quite often, and we, uh, we recognize that as a big issue, is weight loss and fatigue. And those are kind of the other side of it that I talked about, Darren, where it's not so much the excess sugar in your blood, but rather the inability of your body to get the fuel it needs. You're eating the food, but you're not getting any nutritional or energy value from it. And so as a result, you start losing weight and you just don't have energy throughout the day. Imagine if you were only able to eat half of what you do in a day, a lot of us would fear, feel tired and lose weight. And um, that can be very distressing to people, obviously, if you feel like you've had a big healthy meal every day, but in the end, you still feel hungry. So those are probably the, the two biggest tells for people that they may have diabetes. What's interesting about the, the weight issue is, it, th does it not seem to affect more people who are overweight and that you need to lose weight? Well, yes, and, and that is one of the things I think is so confusing for a lot of people. Oftentimes, and correctly, we associate diabetes with being overweight or consuming a lot of sugar. I like sweet tea, many of my patients do, but it's a big culprit for a lot of us. That's where we get a lot of these excess sugars. Um, and that does kind of go back to something that I mentioned at the beginning of our talk, which would be that there are two types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is much less common, and that's often diagnosed in people in their teenage years, and that's really a different entity altogether that ends up with the same sort of effects. But that is an inability of your body to produce the enzyme that I talked about in the first place. But yes, for a lot of us, what we call adult onset or type 2 diabetes, this is caused by typically decades of consuming large amounts of sugars, um, large amounts of fats and carbohydrates, often what we associate as junk food. Um, and over time, our body just develops a resistance to its own levels of insulin. It's sort of a breakdown of our body's basic ability to take sugars and process them and store them correctly. And a lot of that is just because there's just too much sugar coming in and the mechanism itself breaks down. What's the best way to keep this from happening, from getting it? Sure, of course. You know, and, and I tell everyone, um, 
we often medically treat people that have really advanced into diabetic range. Some diabetes is treatable by diet and exercise, but for everyone, prevention or treatment of diabetes, I would always say that eating a healthy diet and getting a moderate amount of exercise is not only good for that, but for your overall health. It kind of goes back to what your mom probably told you a long time ago, eat your vegetables, don't spend too much time in front of the TV, you know, run around. And it's true. There was a lot of wisdom in what mom had to say. So for everybody, I say everything in moderation, um, make sure that all those things that you know probably aren't good for you, a lot of fried foods, a lot of sweets, a lot of dairy, sodas, sweet teas, candies, keep them in moderation. And know that the value of a healthy diet is not so much you know, appearance or, or things like that, but it is preventing you from ending up with a lot of the health consequences that eventually and unfortunately can lead to a greatly increased risk of stroke, heart attack. A lot of people don't appreciate that diabetes is the leading cause of blindness in this country. Um, kidney failure, uh, the list goes on and on. And a lot of us don't really appreciate that diabetes is more than just a number for people that have had it for a long time. It can have severely deleterious effects on your health. You know, this is this is an awareness month. Um, I know a lot of people live with this and don't even know it. Is there an easy way to get tested for this? There is, and your primary care physician or another physician can easily do it. For a lot of people, and this depends a little bit on insurance coverage, but for most everyone, there is a test that can be done in your primary care provider's office in which we just stick your finger and get a tiny drop of blood it doesn't matter if you are fasting or not. It doesn't matter what you had for breakfast that morning or lunch that afternoon. And it's able to tell us what your average blood sugar has been like over the last three months. And we're able to extrapolate then some information and say, what is what we call your A1C? Your A1C is a rather complex number, but essentially it tells us, do you have blood sugars that are often much higher than they should be? Thus, do you have diabetes? It's a quite simple test um, and it can be easily done. We perform it at least 10 times a day in my clinic. This is also one of those situations that the earlier you find out, the, the better treatment would be, or at least treating diabetes. Absolutely. You're absolutely right, Darren. And and that's one of the things that often, especially as primary care providers, I, I try and uh, tell people is that though we have increasingly more tools to treat diabetes or to treat many other illnesses, our best tool we'll always have is prevention, preventing it in the first place. And uh, diabetes is something, especially in advanced stages, that cannot be cured. It's managed. And um, we would like all of our patients to never get there. Right. And that's the thing that will prevent some of the worst sequelae of diabetes from manifesting in you. Once again, full of information. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, Darren. Thank you for having me.